everybody! Welcome to A Case of the Jills. Pardon my wet hair, no time to dry it. This week's videos are inspired by an email that I got over the weekend. I got an email from a young woman who is studying to be an MD, PhD. She has amenorrhea and believe it or not, her area of study is neuroendocrine neuroendocrine control of life-sustaining systems. That's right, she studies the exact systems that lead to amenorrhea. The irony of this is totally not lost on her. In fact, she knows exactly how she ended up where she is. She knows exactly what she has to do to reverse the situation. However, she is really, really stuck. She says that she feels as though her athleticism, her discipline, and her lean body define her. She believes these things to be a symbol of hard work, dedication, and self-discipline. And she holds these things in higher esteem than just about anything else. She wrote to me because she wants help in understanding how to release herself from thinking that these are the best things about herself and how to overcome her fear of gaining weight and perhaps doing less exercise. This really struck me and it got me thinking. I mean, think about this young woman, MD, PhD candidate. Uh, she's already so accomplished. She probably already has so many things to be proud of, yet she's still holding on to this idea of a lean body as being the best thing about her. It seems ludicrous, right? But I understand the struggle, and I'm sure a lot of you do too, so I thought we would talk about this. On this channel, we talk a lot about the, let's call them bad habits, that have gotten us to where we are now. We know that in order to recover from amenorrhea, some of the things that we're going to have to do is reverse those bad habits that we have. The thing is, is that it's not just about the habits. It's the reasons and rationales behind those habits that get us where we are. In order to recover and make long-term sustainable changes in our lives, we need to unpack the reasons. We need to get really deep down into the emotions and the psychology of where we got where we are. We have to ask ourselves why we're hanging on to uh, athleticism and uh, a lean body and you know how many miles we can run in a week as emblematic of the value of who we are as people. It occurred to me that we have a lot more compassion uh, for other people and their accomplishments. We have a lot more, we give a lot more leeway to other people to define who they are. But with ourselves, we are hypercritical and we are very, very, very apt to judge ourselves so harshly. I read this email and I basically just wanted to reach out and give this girl a hug. Why is it that we are able to show compassion and love towards someone, but we are unable to do that with ourselves? Why is it that we view things like compassion and love as weaknesses and things like abs and a lean body as emblematic of our strength? I am not an expert on any of these topics, so of course I did some research to understand the real base of this issue. First thing I needed to do was understand exactly what compassion is. Compassion is the ability to understand the emotional state of oneself or another person. It is often confused with empathy. But compassion is very interesting because it has the added element of wanting to reduce the suffering of oneself or another person. I love this because it requires action. We can't just talk about compassion. We have to do something about it. So going back to our friend who wrote the email, we think to ourselves, really this is a self-esteem issue, right? But self-esteem is defined as having confidence in one's own abilities. It's the degree to which we evaluate ourselves as competent. It is by definition a judgment of oneself and it's going to be flimsy because it still depends on sort of how we view ourselves or how we think the world views us. It's typically dependent on things that are happening right in that moment. Even visually just what we see in that moment might affect our self-esteem. If we're going to judge ourselves, chances are we're going to judge ourselves on something aesthetic. And that's not really our fault, that's how we've been conditioned. Especially as athletes, especially as people who typically walk around with lean bodies, we are given a lot of positive feedback for those types of things because again that's just it's just society's conditioning so of course we tend to lean on those things as something of value when we are faced with something like amenorrhea which requires us to perhaps change our body composition and do less exercise this throws us into a complete freak out because we're thinking to ourselves i'm going to lose all those things of value about myself so how do we understand our value how do we look away from those aesthetic or very surface things that might give us a momentary burst of you know self-esteem how do we look deeper and find something more sustainable that can carry us through 
I heard something recently that affected me tremendously and I think it's gonna help you too. I listened to a podcast that was just amazing. It was on the Rich Roll podcast and I will of course link the episode below. Rich had on a woman named Sharon Salzberg. She just wrote a new book. The book is called On Real Love, The Art of Mindful Connection. Don't let me lose you here. Trust me on this, just keep listening. The only way to get past this self-esteem issue and find something more sustainable is to be compassionate and love ourselves. We have a problem with loving ourselves because we think of it as narcissistic. That is an uncomfortable and also untrue association. According to Sharon, loving ourselves is about coming to things from a place of sufficiency. It's about perceiving an inner abundance, which ultimately gives you strength because no matter what, you can look inside and see that you are enough. That inner strength gives you the ability to understand your boundaries, lets you figure out how much to push yourself, lets you understand how to take care of yourself, and is ultimately the thing that will help you believe in yourself no matter what. She says that developing compassion for yourself is how you get through the hard times. It requires a sense of resilience. We have talked about resilience on this channel before. We talked about how resilience and adaptability is what helps you recover from situations. And actually, if you watch my video on the anti-type A personality, you'll see a lot on resilience there. People think compassion is laziness, like you're letting yourself off the hook, but that could not be further from the truth. Developing this compassion requires strength. It requires self-examination. The writer of the email feels that she's gotten positive feedback for her body shape. There's a rush that we get from that. It's the same rush that you get when you cross a finish line or when you get a lot of likes on a selfie or when you look down and see your morning abs. That can be powerful, but according to Sharon, that's the kind of thing that burns hot and then fades away. She says that developing the sense of love and compassion for oneself is not sexy, but it is sustainable. It requires us to look deep inside and find the things about us that retain value, irrespective of what we look like on the outside. But if you're watching this video, you want something a little more concrete than that. I get it. If you need more reason why compassion is important in amenorrhea recovery, how about this? In the journal called Psychoneuroendocrinology, say that five times fast, there was a study done on self-compassion and stress hormones. The study is entitled, Self-Compassion Training Modulates Alpha Amylase, Heart Rate Variability, and Subjective Responses to Social Evaluative Threat in Women. Translation, in the face of social evaluative stressors, you know those daily social roles that we're confronted with that say that we have to be tiny, small, petite, have abs, and be beautiful all the time? Yeah, those. The stress that we face from things like that can actually trigger psychological and physiological stress responses, which create changes in systems. Have you heard this before? Yes, and bring about things like amenorrhea. When the women in this study received self-compassion training, the stress response that was created from those social factors was much less. So basically, being able to practice self-compassion in the face of these stressors actually decreases stress hormones. So we have some major work to do, right? And that's what we're gonna talk about all this week. I have some awesome studies on sport and self-compassion, believe it or not. We're gonna dig into applied sports psychology with an article by Fabio Zucchelli. And we're gonna talk about ways to figure out how to be more compassionate toward ourselves. To get started, I tried to dig into some of the exercises that we can do to cultivate self-compassion. And in full disclosure, a lot of them were a little woo-woo for me. <laughs> you know, I'm just, I'm trying to get my brain around this myself. But there's two things that did resonate with me, and I think they're things that we can practice between now and the next video. I hope that you join me in this, because I'm gonna be doing it too. Okay, the first thing that we need to do is notice when we are being hypercritical of ourselves or others. When we see ourselves or someone else doing something that sparks a criticism, the idea is to take note of that and to change what we say. This is gonna require a lot of work, but I know I can do it. The next one is super interesting. When we are undervaluing ourselves, chances are we are thinking very, very much about the things that we don't want. We say, I don't wanna stop exercising because I don't wanna gain weight. But we spend very little time thinking about what we do want. So the idea is for us to actually write down, what do we want? In the absence of fear, what do we want? I'm gonna do this one too. And again, the purpose of this is to create sustainable change so that we can recover well and not go back to old habits. I hope that this sounds as intriguing to you as it did to me. And I hope that you'll join me in doing those exercises so that we can 
sort of figure out where to start with all this. The new website is almost up and ready to go and the ebook of Frequently Asked Questions has been completed. It will be available on the new website very soon. If you have not done so already, please hit that subscribe button. It would really mean a lot to me. Thank you for following me on Instagram. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. More on love and compassion coming for the end of this week. See you soon.